It's all over the media. Interest rates are high. Don't buy. Don't buy. Wait until interest rates are lower, they say. But consider for a moment, if you do wait, you could be missing out on a number of opportunities. The truth is, there are all different reasons for buying a home. Maybe you're going through a divorce and you have a family and renting isn't an option. Maybe you're relocating to a new state or a new area and you need to purchase a home because you're going to put up rooms there. Maybe you just want to take advantage of home ownership and building equity and potential tax benefits or the stability and security that a home can provide. No matter what the reason, I have good news for you. If you want to buy a home when mortgage rates are high and still get a lower rate, you have some options. I'm going to share those options with you here in a sec. So let's get right into it. First, rate buy downs. Now, what the heck does that mean? There are all different types of interest rate buy downs that are out there today. First, I'm going to kind of put them into two different categories. One is going to be what I'll call a permanent interest rate buy down. And the second one's going to be a temporary rate buy down. First, focus on the permanent rate buy down. This is where whatever the going interest rate is, you would pay discount points to purchase that interest rate or buy that rate down to a point where it makes sense for you on a payment standpoint. Now, the advantages of that are that your interest rate isn't going to change, assuming it's a 30-year fixed rate. The disadvantage to that is it can be costly to pay points to buy interest rates down. There's not a big swing with the cost to get a particular rate in today's market. But if we think about a temporary buy-down, a temporary rate buy-down is where you would negotiate for the seller to contribute toward your closing cost. And some of that money is used to buy your interest rate down for a period of time. The way it works generally is what we'll call a 2-1 temporary buy-down. And that is, let's say that your rate today is 7% 30-year fixed rate. Let's just say that. The, the scenario would be on a temporary buy-down, your payment for the first year of your home loan would be paced on two points lower than whatever your note rate is. So in our example, that 7% would put you at a payment based on 5% for the first 12 months. Then the second year, your payment would be based at 6%. And then the third and final year, your payment would be based on whatever that note rate is. Again, in this example, that would be 7%. The advantage of a temporary buy-down is this. Because those monies are paid by the seller and because those monies are held in like a little savings account that are used to offset your payments for the first 24 months on a 2-1 buy-down, if interest rates do drop, as predicted that they will, but nobody knows. Let's, let's just be clear. Nobody knows. Everybody has a production. But if they did drop in the first 24-month period and there's still money left in that little holding account that has been used to pay the differential between your note rate and your lower payment. In that scenario, that balance would be credited back to your principal balance on a refinance. So you don't lose those monies. You're not out that money. So that's one of the benefits and why we are having so many temporary rate buy-down discussions. Now, the disadvantage or the con, if you will, on a temporary rate buy-down is that you have to have the seller contribute towards your closing costs. Well, if you're looking in an area that is highly competitive, maybe houses are flying off the market, maybe sellers are not in a position that they need to contribute towards closing costs. If that's the case, you may not be able to negotiate to have the seller contribute towards your closing costs to then use those funds for a temporary rate buy-down. There's all kinds of strategy when it comes to rate buy-down. But those are the two most common rate buy-downs that we see today. All right, let's move on to arms or adjustable rate mortgages. Adjustable rate mortgages can also mean a lot of different things. Let's say that your interest rate on that adjustable rate is fixed for a period of time. Maybe it's a five-year fixed rate or a seven-year fixed rate or even a 10-year fixed rate. What happens is the payment is truly fixed based on that rate for that duration. Once that duration expires, then your interest rate will start to adjust based on the index and the margin of the note that you took out with the lender. Adjustable rate mortgages can be something to consider, but what you want to do is look at that rate in relation to the 30-year fixed rate, because in today's market, there's not a huge discrepancy between the adjustable rate mortgages that are fixed for a period of time and the traditional 30-year fixed rate, but it's something to check into. 
Another option when interest rates are high is to look at new construction homes. Now, why would that even matter? Or well, here's the deal. Many new home builders across the country are themselves going in and buying those interest rates down. Many of them are doing a permanent buy down and buying them very low, much lower than the current market rate if you were going to buy a resale house. Or maybe they're just contributing towards your closing costs and then you're using that money to do a temporary rate buy down. But don't eliminate or don't rule out the new construction home because it is a viable option in today's higher interest rate market. And lastly, now get ready because this one's juicy. There's a lot of buzz out there about assumable loans, assumable home loans. Here's the scoop. First, you want to determine what type of loan that the seller has that you would be considering assuming. And this is a viable option. It absolutely is. But here's what you may not know. Let's say that the seller does have an FHA loan on the property. And let's say that the interest rate's 3% on the 30-year fixed rate. I mean, you want that interest rate, right? Well, let's say the balance on that is $300,000, but the seller can sell that house for $500,000 today. Here's what people aren't telling you. If you want to buy that house with that assumable mortgage on it, you have to be able to put down the $200,000 because when you assume a loan, you're just assuming that loan balance in the terms of that loan. Now, keep in mind, in my scenario, if the purchase price is $500,000, you're putting $200,000 down, you are assuming that seller's loan balance of $300,000, assuming that the seller has an FHA loan, it's very likely that there's going to be mortgage insurance on that loan because if the seller put less than 10% down when they took out that loan, then with FHA, mortgage insurance stays on the loan for the life of the loan. So you have to run the numbers on the total APR, counting the cost of mortgage insurance. It's not just the note rate. It's not just that low assumable rate. If you're putting that much money down, which is more than 20%, then again, you just have to know that if you're assuming that FHA loan, and again, they put 10% down when the seller last acquired that mortgage, very likely you're going to pay mortgage insurance. So your rate is going to be a little bit higher than that 3% or whatever it is on the note rate. If it works and you were planning on putting money down anyway, and you can make the differential work, go for it. Now you would contact the seller's lender. You would talk to them about an assumption. It is full qualifying, just like other home loans. And you would move through that process. Generally, we find Government-backed loans are those types of loans that are assumable. So that would be FHA, VA, and USDA. Those are government-backed loans, and those are the ones that we will see that are assumable, and it's okay. Now, here's the scoop on conventional assumable loans. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac conventional loans are not assumable like government-backed loans. But there are ways that people go through assuming a seller's lower note. You have to be careful and make sure that you know all the details because it's not black and white. When you assume an FHA loan or a VA loan, it is black and white. You go through the assumption process, you qualify. When you close escrow, that note transfers over to you and the seller is, boom, on with purchasing or doing whatever they're going to do next. There's no liability left there for the seller. But it's not that way on a conventional loan because conventional loans and their nature are not fully assumable like government backbone. So just gonna know that, again, lots of buzz out there. And we're gonna dig a little bit deeper on that in the future, but just know, boop, if it sounds too good to be true, it might, get the facts, ask all the right questions. Your real estate agent will be very helpful with you in this scenario. So which strategy is best for you? It's a great question. And I know there is so much that goes into this. To really kind of vet this, schedule a call via the link below, and we'll be able to review your various options with you. We can do some side-by-side -side comparisons so that you'll be able to make an educated decision. If you want to do a deep dive and better understand the difference between an FHA home loan and a conventional home loan, stay tuned because that video is going to play next. Mm -hmm.